This episode of Wise Advice is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people like runners, cyclists, weightlifters, and vegetarians get lower rates on their life insurance. Go to healthiq.com forward slash DAG to support the show and see if you qualify. Fat DAG is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 172 of Wise Advice. It's always an honor to be hanging out here with you. Uh, We're here on live on Facebook, live on YouTube. I gave them a quick recap of where we've been for a little while. Of course, if you're following along inside the Wise Advice app from your app store, you'll notice that between episode 171 and 172, it's been a couple days. And, you know, we do the show every single day, except for the days that we don't. And in this case, the days that we don't have really outnumbered the days that we do. And and a lot of that has just been be, because of the schedule. And, uh, you know, we did a, an event with the Pacers not too long ago where we, where we took 20 kids out and gave them the time of their lives where they played on the basketball court with Scott Pollard. Uh, shout out to you, Scott, if you're listening. Dude was amazing. He had those kids out there dribbling, running laps and shooting layups. And uh, we had an amazing evening. We had the entire place to ourselves. It was so much fun. The kids walked in the locker room. Uh, in the locker room was their name hanging on a on a um, on the locker. Their jerseys were there, and it was just a, such an amazing event for those kids. Left that, went to Weight Watcher meeting, went to another uh, event, and then up to Detroit where we filmed uh, the Doctor Nandy Ask Doctor Nandy television show. Unfortunately, Detroit was getting about nine inches of snow up there, so spent the entire weekend in the snow, came back and just been nonstop until here we are. It's Friday night. We're, uh, sorry, it's Thursday night. We're live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Episode 172, getting it done. I thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of everything we got going on here. Lots of exciting news to to tell you about. Keep an eye on fatdag.com. That's where I'm going to put a lot of that information. Of course, if you want to know when the show goes live, Twitter is your best bet for that. Follow Wise Advice on Twitter. I'm looking at, and I'm going to rely on you to give me that information. I'm looking at a trip in April uh, to come out somewhere, either the West Coast, East Coast, Southeast, who knows? But uh, your input will help me start that. We'll start putting some polls out there and see maybe where we're going to end up in April. Out of the gate, Liz writes in and says, well, hi, Fat Dag. Uh, You were kind enough to give me a shout out back on November 7th, 2017, episode 138 of Wise Advice for losing 56 pounds and reaching goal. Although the scale said I was at goal technically, I still didn't have that I'm at goal feeling you so often talk about. So I just want to give you an update with what can, with what, with what continued focus and perseverance can do. I'm now just shy of a 70 pound loss and I'm feeling more like the best version of me I've been in my entire adult life. My why is ever-changing now as I reach a little further each day to unlock all of the hidden potential that has just been there waiting for me. Thanks for helping me find the courage to believe that I could get this done. Your wingman, Liz, out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Well, Liz, what an amazing email. Congratulations on getting to goal. Congratulations on, on getting to lifetime. And I really, really like what you said. Um, you know, when you were losing 
back in November. You got to episode 138 here. You're down 56 pounds to reach goal, but you didn't feel that goal feeling. And this, it's what I talked about quite often is exactly like you said, is that you'll know when you get to goal. You'll know when you hop on that scale and don't want to lose any more weight. But the reality is, is, is if you get to your goal and you've built a healthy lifestyle and you're eating healthy and you're moving more, you're getting more exercise and you're just generally living a healthy life, your body is going to dictate how much it wants to weigh. Your responsibility in this whole thing is just to take care of it. Your responsibility is to eat right. Your responsibility is to give it some sort of exercise, maybe some movement, depending on where you are in your journey. That's your responsibility. That's the only piece of this journey you can control. You can't control the number on the scale. You can't control whether you're going to be down 56 pounds or where you're going to be down 70 pounds. But what you've figured out is when you get to 56 pounds down and you didn't exactly feel like you were at goal, you kept living happy and, and a healthy life. And your body has determined that another 13 pounds can go. That's goal. And the reason that is what I call goal is because you weren't trying to lose weight these last 13 pounds, really. You were just trying to live healthy. You were just trying to get to that better version of yourself, pushing a little further each day, digging deep into a true lifestyle change. I'm a firm believer that when you get to the point, when you get on the scale and you don't want to lose any more weight, and that goal feeling that I often talk about of just, you know it. It's a look and a feel. When you get there, you'll never give it back. And if you get to the point where you get really, really close, you haven't fully cemented in that feeling that I'm talking about. So, so it's hard to capture that and keep it bundled up. It's why I encourage you just to continue to eat right, continue to live healthy and be healthy, Find the courage that you need to get this done. I know you can do it. I know it's possible. I've seen so many people do this. And they all do it the same way, is they just stand there and, and just be healthy. That's all it takes. I tell you, when, when I was up filming uh, the Ask Dr. Nandy show, you know, I got the chance to hang out with Big Brother uh, season number two, Pete Thomas. Pete Thomas was the, the at-home winner for season number two. He lost about 80 pounds on the show, continued on at home, dropped about another 130 pounds, and came back as the at-home winner. We had a many, many conversations as we were waiting for the television show to tape. And one of the things him and I both agreed on it was actually kind of cool to have a conversation with this guy because um, he, he looks fantastic. He's uh, an amazing dude. And we agreed that it's a mindset. We agreed that, you know, everything that you do on this journey is mental. You've got to keep your head in the game. You've got to kind of want to win. And if you want to win, you can go in. I asked him, I said, uh, I said you know, how was, how was being on... Um, on the biggest loser. I think I said big brother earlier, but how was being on the biggest loser? And he said, man, it was terrible. He goes, they, they take, they take people who are overweight. They make you work out four hours a day. He goes, it's just not fun. You know, and that's not sustainable. What's sustainable is, is that gave him the tools and the drive and the motivation to push forward. It gave him the courage to find everything he knew he could do and get it done. That's what you just did, Liz. That's what gets you to 70 pounds down. That's what makes you awesome. Keep up the amazing work. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health conscious people like runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. Like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health conscious lifestyle. Health IQ is the fastest growing life insurance company with over $5 billion in coverage. You may be wondering, what if I have a pre-existing condition? Can I still get special rates? You sure can. A previous illness like sleep apnea, heart disease, or diabetes doesn't define you. 
managing and overcoming chronic diseases or illnesses is really hard work. It's something they celebrate and absolutely can still get you special rates. I know what you're asking, but Fat Dag, are Health IQ's special rates just great marketing? Nope, it's way better. 56% of their clients get their exclusive special rates. They're the only company that has invested in gathering science and data to prove that health conscious people live longer. So Health IQ is the only place you can find the special rates you deserve. I checked it out myself. The quote came in at a lower rate than my current policy. I've gone through the process of getting screened. I have my blood drawn. I talked to Ryan at Health IQ and he was able to answer all of my questions. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com forward slash DAG. Life insurance companies calculate your policy rates based on your nearest age, not your actual age, and rates increase as you get older. So lock in the best rate possible by getting a free quote today. Visit healthiq.com forward slash DAG. Next email is from Alyssa. She says, hi, hi, Fat Dag. My name is Alyssa, and I just want to say thanks for all of your work. You and the people of Connect have motivated me in ways that are so hard to put into words. I, I, I know it's almost everyone's story, but I've struggled with my weight since middle school. I'm pretty sure that was the first of many times that I joined Weight Watchers. In between, I tried everything else, hypnotherapy, 12 steps, you name it. I tried it. And I rarely lost more than 10 pounds. And now I'm down 10%. Actually more, 27 pounds so far. But here I am, and for once, I know why I'm here. Your show and Connect are game changers, and I know this time around will be different. This feels different. The one thing I now know is that it's a lifetime commitment. When you talk about maintenance... It's realistic, and now I have realistic expectations of life post-weight loss. It's not all rainbows and pizza. It still takes work and commitment. Thank you for that, Alyssa. Uh, Alyssa, amazing work. Um, You're absolutely welcome. I agree with you. Everything that we talked about um, as far as how to get this done, how how to really dig into this, you know, it's finding that motivation that works. And I agree with you. The folks on Connect were that motivation for me. It still are. You know, I still visit Connect once a day, once or twice a day. And, and I find inspiration. I find motivation. And you're absolutely right. It's hard to put it in words. And, you know, just like you, I, I struggle with my weight for so long, most of it as an adult. Luckily, in high school, I, I was an athlete. I wasn't overweight. But But once I went to college, I started picking up the weight. But You know, so many times that I try and just lose weight and I would lose a little bit of weight, gain some weight, lose some weight, gain some weight, just like you could, I could rarely lose 10 pounds. So here you are down 10%. What an amazing accomplishment that is. And if you've listened to the show any stretch of time, you know that if you've hit your 10% weight loss goal, you can do whatever you want. Any goal you want is possible. 10% proves that you know how to follow a plan. You know how to set a goal. You know how to work hard to get a goal. You know how to work, and if you don't get it the first time, you continue to do it. You continue to try. You continue to stay focused. You wake up every day on fire wanting to get it done. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to not quit, and that is how you get to a 10% weight loss. Congratulations on doing that. And and what's really, really interesting is to see that in this stage of the game for you, you know, where where you've gone through a series of times where where you could rarely lose more than 10 pounds, you've now almost tripled that weight loss. Which means you're on fire, which means you're focused, which means you can do anything you want to do. Now, I appreciate the shout out, you know, and, and I, there are a lot of folks who write in and say the show is a game changer, connect is a game changer, uh, and this time around it feels different. And, and what I can tell you is the reason this time feels different for you is because you're focused. You have found some tools to put in your toolbox that remind you every single day that you can do this. You wake up every single day, something reminds you you can do it. You get through the day 
And that, you know, that day restarts the next day and you're again reminded that you can do it. And you found out what your why is and you balanced much of your life up against why am I doing this? And the why will always win. Now, talking about maintenance, I, you know, I believe maintenance is the best part of this journey because, because for me, maintenance is realistic. I have realistic expectations. And, and, and to think that you know, for the rest of my life, I have to do everything that I've done to get here is completely doable. It's completely sustainable. You know, after you lose the weight, after you get to a point where you no longer want to lose any more weight, those realistic expectations of what does life look like? What does life feel like? I tell you, it's the most amazing feeling. And, and I honestly, you know, wish, obviously, I wish I would have gotten here sooner, but I'm certainly glad I didn't because I believe everything I learned up to this point is what's keeping me honest and keeping me accountable and keeping me at this point. No, it's not all rainbows and pizza, but, it, but it's absolutely doable. It absolutely takes work. It absolutely takes commitment. For the rest of your life, you have to understand what it is you're after. What it is you're after is a healthy, happy life. Alyssa, you have that. You're giving yourself that prize. Thank you for being part of the team here. Uh, Let's continue to get it done. Out of Oklahoma, Chris writes in and says, Hey, for starters, thank you for your awesome podcast. I listened to it early on in 2017, but I stopped. My wife and I started Weight Watchers September of 2016. We were doing awesome and had a great six months. By mid-March, I was down 75, 75 pounds and she was pushing 50. But then life happened and we both stalled. And we end up needing to quit Weight Watchers in June. By December, we had both gained everything back. We started back on December 26, and I've struggled since. I've been having trouble with comparing everything I do and how I'm doing with the way things were the last time. My main question is, how do I not think about the last time? How do I become successful again? I know the program works because I was successful. I feel that thinking and comparing to the last time It's sabotaging me this time. Now, mid-feb, I've decided that as of today, I'm cleaning my slate. I took my 75-pound charm. I kept it with me, took it off my keys and my wife, and I threw the charm in the lake near our place. We're getting rid of everything and removing the previous success and starting over. Thanks for doing what you do. You make a difference, and you make us all listening know that we can do this. Thank you again, Chris from Oklahoma. Well, Chris, um, let me let's address this. This is a very common uh, common thing here, and so uh, so many people join Weight Watchers, and, and we know the program works, right? Um, you know, if you follow any of the um, the Weight Watcher ambassadors, uh, of which I am not one, but uh, so uh, paraphrase with me for a second. But if you follow them, a lot of them will put in the bottom of their post something to the effect of um, members following the plan can expect to lose one to two pounds a week. Um, so I, I have to assume that because they're able to put that in their post, that, that somehow that's been vetted by a legal team. So there obviously is proof that the program works, a proof enough where, where it can be a disclaimer in the bottom of someone's social media post who, who's being promoted to say that. So, so Chris, the program absolutely works. That's cool. Let's, we know that. Chris, you have had success on the program. You're down 75 pounds. You don't lose 75 pounds on accident. Your wife lost 50 pounds. You don't together lose 125 pounds accidentally. Now, I absolutely understand the stall. I understand me potentially having to quit Weight Watchers, but, but what I want to convey to you is that it doesn't mean you have to give up on eating healthy. I'm pretty convinced at this point in my journey that I could just switch to, to uh, you know, just tracking mentally, making healthy choices, and be able to do fairly well. I understand now, because of doing the plan for so long, I understand generally how much food I need in the day. And I understand generally what foods are good for me and what foods are bad for me. There's still times that I do need to scan something to get, to get that idea, to get the actual data. 
But Chris, you guys had this figured out. Go back to what worked. And, and so the, the piece of your email that, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't exactly thrilled when I read is that, is that you want to start over, but it's actually impossible to start over. Because you gained quite a bit of knowledge during that process. When you got to the point you were down 75 pounds, you learned quite a bit. Everything you learned in that journey is what got you that success. You can't unlearn that. You can't forget that. You can't just say, I never knew any of that. So that success, what you do now is you build on that. Now, taking your 75-pound charm and tossing it, I, I get the mindset behind that, but you still earned it. It's still yours. You still lost 75 pounds. Now we just got to figure out what it takes for you to maintain that. As you start this journey, as you reattempt, as you re go after something that is so worth having, you're armed with so much more knowledge than you've ever been. First and foremost, is you're armed with the knowledge of knowing that it's possible. Not only knowing that it is possible, but, but you know that you can do it. That's an amazing head start as you embark on this journey. So don't start over. Take the knowledge that you've learned, and, and now let's look for maybe the things that derailed you, the things that caused you to quit. Let's find ways to prevent that from happening, and that is how you build a successful life. If you listen to the show for any time, you know it took me five times to get to the point where I finally understand, understood that I had to completely change my life. You know, the first times that I lost 30, 40, 50 pounds, whatever it was, I was unwilling to change my life. I, what I was willing to do was suppress some bad habits for a little while and get to a point where I was complacent and then allow those bad habits to come back. This time, I learned that what, every time that I did that, I ended up rejoining at a much higher weight. And so what I promised myself this time is that I'm not going to do that. I'm going to push forward until I no longer, no longer recognize those bad habits that put me overweight. And so that's what you need to take from this journey, Chris. You need to figure out what derailed you, how does that derail you, and what plan are you going to put in place after you get your success to continue living a healthy, happy life. And for so many people, that's continuing to check in with a weekly meeting. You know, you see often so many times lifetime members as they skip and they go to that, that once a month meeting. You can go every week. You can continue do the same things that you did to lose the weight, to maintain the weight, and that is how you get it done. Thanks for your email, Chris. You guys got this. I know you do. I believe you can do it. From Pacifica, California, May writes in, says, Hi, Fat Dag. Uh, since it's been a while, I felt the need to give you an update on my journey. I've been a lifetimer since September 2016, and it's been a learning experience. I learned that I like being healthy. I like exercising regularly. I like wearing all the clothes in my closet, and they fit comfortably. I like going for a 5K run at a whim. I like making the right food choices most of the time. I like having confidence. Since the holidays, though, I've lost my lifetime at goal status, and I needed to refocus. One thing I changed is that I've been a daily wearer since I hit lifetime, but this week, I stopped. I found myself allowing that black box to have all of the power, and it would dictate the rest of my day. I would compare that number to your weight fluctuation that was posted on Facebook. I know that wasn't good for me. So I went back to the basics, weighing my food, tracking everything, and being more mindful of my food choices. I know that I can't lose weight, but I can control what food I eat and how much activity I get. As I was on the rowing machine today, I looked around me and there were about 20 different cardio machines, treadmills, electrical machines, and stationary bikes, each with a person on them. It got me thinking that each person is in on their own machine, going through their own journey, and it's very unique to them, 
but we're all at the gym together. No one is judging anyone or questioning why someone else is there. They're only thinking of what they need to do to make a change to something they didn't like about themselves. We are all in this together, but separately. It's all our own journey, and it's not to be compared with anyone else's. I found myself doing that more and more lately, and I'm hoping by looking at it differently, I can keep in my own lane. This isn't much of a celebratory email, but more of a realization email, that even at lifetime, we're always managing our obesity, and it is for life. Just thought it was a good time to check in. Wishing you good focus. May from Pacifica, California. May, uh, very, very great email. I think you get it. Uh, the, the list you wrote at the beginning, the things that you like, being healthy, exercising, going for a 5K run on a whim, making the right food choices, having confidence, wearing clothes in your closet, all of those things come from someone who is happy with themselves. Now, it doesn't matter you know, where you are in your weight loss journey. Those things you can celebrate any time you want. And by finding them, recognizing them, and, and, and keeping inventory of them, that's what builds the momentum to want you to continue doing this. Congratulations at hitting a lifetime. That, that's a very, very difficult accomplishment, and you're able to get it done. Now, as you continue to refocus to get back to your goal weight, you know, you're right. I do post my weight every single day on the scale. I get up every single morning. I hop on the scale. It auto posts to Facebook. It auto goes to Twitter. I do that to remind me that I'm mentally engaged. I don't care what the number is within reason, right? And so all I'm doing is telling the world that good morning, I've checked in. I'm here. I'm ready. I don't know what today's going to look like. I don't know how successful it's going to be. But what I can promise you is when I wake up in the morning, I will get on the scale. And by that scale tweeting out, that is me saying good morning to you. And all it is is me saying, I've checked in. I've checked in. You know, whatever happened yesterday happened. I'm checked in today. And today I'm going to, to, um, to, to make the adjustments that I need. The scale has absolutely no power over me. None. I have the power of no matter what happened in my day before, hopping on the scale, checking in, and saying, it's a new day, I'm going to get it done. You're absolutely right. We can't control the number, but we can control how we react to it. I love your analogy of going to the gym, and, and that happened to me too. Early on in, in my journey, one of the things I was thinking as I walked into the gym at 265 pounds, 263 and a half, sorry, when I walked into the gym at 263.5 pounds, you know, I, I made the assumption that everyone there, it was New Year's Eve, you know, New Year's Day-ish, I made the assumption that everyone would be looking at me and watching me, but you're absolutely right, no one cared. They were all focused on everything they had to do for their own success. That's what we got to do on this journey. You, you've got to find a way to have success. The way to have success is to build your own plan, to work your own plan, to stay in your own lane. You know, there may come a time when you're on an elliptical and you may not know how to use the elliptical. So you look over real quick and, you, and you've kind of watched someone for a little bit use the elliptical. And then you go back and you go to your own elliptical and do the exercise that you saw them do, that you saw was working for them. But, but you're doing your own journey. And you've got to stay in your own lane. And, and you know, you've heard the, the quote many times, I, f- I forget who says it, but you know, comparison is the thief of joy. And so the things that you're celebrating and, and you know, that you know are wonderful in your life, as you continue to celebrate them, That's staying in your lane, focusing on all the things that you're doing right to get the results that you want, which ultimately gets you success, and that keeps us celebrating. That's what this whole journey is about. It's just absolutely celebrating 
everything that we got going on in our journey. And so when I was on the television show, Ask Dr. Nandy last week, and he asked me, you know, one of the questions that, that they asked was, you know, wh- what do you do for someone who hasn't quite figured their journey out? And and, and one of the things I, I, I wanted to say, it didn't get into the show, but I had it ready to go, was, you know, find things along your way that are goals. Find things that you can celebrate. If you can set a small goal and mark it off, you will be encouraged to set another goal and mark it off. And the more check marks that you have and the more boxes you have, the more you build that confidence. And the more that confidence reminds you that you can do anything that you want. That's living. That's an amazing life. That's an amazing way to go through this. And so just by setting small goals and getting it done, staying in your own lane, focusing on you, you can get to goal. And when you get to goal and you get to the point where you hop on the scale and you no longer want to lose any more weight, we celebrate. Well, what is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com, click on Wise Advice Podcast, send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. If you've listened for any length of time, you know this show is 100% listener content generated. If you don't email in, I have nothing to talk about. So go ahead, shoot in your email, go to fatdag.com, send that in. I want you to email in those celebrations. I want you to be proud of what you're doing. I want you to take a minute to write it down. I want you to take two minutes of your day to celebrate you. Tell me what you're doing right. Tell me what you want to help with. Let's get it done together. I'm truly honored to walk this journey with you. But that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.